what's going on everyone welcome to today's how-to video today we'll be going over the safety squat bar and just a few pointers here and there on uh, a few things that I do personally and a few things that I read about uh, on the safety squat bar but uh, let's get into it so first things first on the safety squat bar um, you kind of want to treat it just like a regular squat I know it's not going to feel that way, but you'll kind of want to treat it just like a regular squat. And personal preference, I like to try and keep these handles right here uh, kind of in a neutral position. So I'll obviously set up like I would normally for a squat, lift it up, and then take my three steps out. And you don't have to use my stance as a guideline. It's just I squat wider, so this is my normal squat stance. So. You can see here that the handlebars are coming out right in front of me like this and I have a little bit of pressure underneath it just kind of keep it in place. Um, it'll be a little different once you have weight on here. Once the weight are on the sides it'll kind of lean it forward a little bit and that's when you actually have to start putting pressure on it to keep it in a neutral position. Safety squat bar is a, a variation that is used in conjugate or just in general. Um, in this term I'm be referring to conjugate a lot because that's the way I train. but what it's used for is like today for per se uh, I am doing safety squat bar with chains and a box um, so that'll be the variation for the day um, is a good variation to do that would be helpful for your squat and your deadlift it kind of mimics the deadlift movement move pattern per se um, it really focuses on your back when you're lifting it because when it, once you come out into the hole it wants to uh, it wants to bend you over so you have to use your back to kind of keep yourself straight up so it's pretty helpful for building a stronger back or lower back at least and uh, posterior chain in general but back to the actual lift what you'll do is you'll get your squat stance take a big breath come down like normal and I like to keep the uh, handlebars in that neutral position all the way down. And I know some people from here, when they come up, they start pressing, pushing the uh, weight up with their arms, which makes it a little easier on your back. And uh, makes it, personally, it feels more like a regular squat to me. All right, sorry, we're back. My camera battery just died, which I should have lifted it once I turned it on, but I didn't. Um, so like I was saying, Whenever you push up on it, when you come up, it feels like a regular squat and it kind of takes away of what the safety squat bar movement is trying to do. So I try and keep it in that neutral position. And forewarning, um, it depends on what bar you use. Uh, this one here is 65 pounds, I believe. Yes, it's 65 pounds. Um, there's other bars that weigh more, there's other ones that weigh less. You kind of just gotta ask your gym and see how much yours weighs before you start lifting because I know I when I started with this one I was put 315 on there and I was like why does it feel so weird and it was actually 330 so <laughs> learn from my mistakes just make sure you ask on uh, how much your safety squat bars weigh uh, we have another one uh, it's uh, not really a safety squat bar it's more of a spider bar which the handlebars come out to about here um, that one weighs about 65 or 70 um, but you kind of just got to figure out what uh, weight yours is before you get started. Uh, but yeah, I'll do a few reps here and kind of just give you an idea. Uh, the safety squat bar I've heard is good for taller lifters. I didn't really read too much into it. Um, personally, I consider myself a taller person, uh, but I'm not too sure on how different that would be for a shorter person. So. Um, Safety squat bar also focuses pretty hard on your quads when you're doing it. Um, if you need a little extra quad work and would like to squat and uh, work on your deadlift a little bit. But once you put some weight on here, you really start feeling it wanting to lean you forward. When you come down, you'll come down here like a normal. And then you get ready to come up and it kind of arches your back forward a little bit when you come up. So. You really gotta focus on sitting back when doing this, just like a regular squat. But what you need to focus even harder on is whenever you come back up, you wanna try and keep your back 
as solid as possible. Really think about keeping your back tight and uh, really breathing through your core. Uh, the safety squat bar is really good for, let me come this way, really good for improving your trunk strength or if you, uh, like I said before, if you need a little extra help on your deadlift and still want to squat on your max effort days, uh, this is really great for that. Um, really, I, I think the safety squat bar personally is one of the better, if not one of the best exercises you can do that translates well for the squat and the deadlift. So if you're having struggles squatting or deadlifting, Try and throw some safety squat bar in there. It doesn't necessarily have to be as main movement. It could be a secondary movement or even a hypertrophy, move, hypertrophy movement if you really need it to be. Um, so I'm gonna just show you a few example sets. Uh, today I'm doing max effort safety squat bar to a just slightly below parallel box with chains added on the side. I'm not too sure on how much the chains will be yet, but. Uh, uh, you'll see a little bit of examples and I'll probably talk to you right after that and I'll see you then. Alright, well, just got done with the warm up slash pre exercises before. Whew, just got done bot squat or bot jumping, so I'm a little tired. <clears throat> but let's get into these warm ups. So I was wrong, there's no chains today, but it is still low box and wide stance. So I already have a wide stance. This might just be the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so today's to a max effort. And I'll try and get a couple different angles to kind of show you how to sit back or how at least I do. I'm not perfect, but you'll kind of get the idea from it. So I'm gonna record this one from the side so you kind of see what I'm talking about when these handles uh, do once you actually have weight on here. So just keep an eye out on that and keep an eye out on this part of my body, the back, the butt. Um, Usually I try and start the squat by having my hips shoot back and my knees starting to bend at the same time and just focus on sitting straight back with it. So just keep an eye out for those two things. kind of be on the lookout for a few little things that I do. I'm, and once again, I'm not saying I'm perfect, I'm not a coach. I'm just going off based off what I know and how proficient I am currently. And I'm not saying I'm the most proficient either, but it doesn't really sound like you should be listening to me, huh? No, I'm kidding. This is gonna be a good video. Um, just keep on the lookout for little things I do and I'll try and hop in whenever I have something to tell y'all. So as the weight goes up, you'll kind of see more and more where my form will break down. Uh, this might be the same for you guys, it might not. Um, based off what I know, uh, usually form will start breaking down with your lower back. And then usually be lower back, you'll start doing uh, like a half squat and then good morning, get the rest of the way up. And that's when you'll know your form's starting to break down. Um, when that happens, you really just want to focus on really keeping your back tight and focusing on keeping that as neutral as possible. So you might not see it here, but sooner or later you'll start seeing my back kind of start curving or turning into a two movement exercise. So it's going to be a max effort, so you'll definitely see some of that. But let's get into 225.
So this might not apply too much to the safety squat box in general, but I know at least on a low box, uh, you really want to focus on spreading the floor with your feet when you come up, but really pushing out wide, uh, trying to split the floor in half. I've heard um, when you're doing it, it uh, it just really helps keep your form and. Your knees won't do that whole buckle in when you come squatting up and you lose pounds doing that. Um, the first rep, you might have seen some backgrounding. Not too sure, but I corrected that the next two or three reps. So, like I said, you really just got to focus on keeping your back tight and neutral during the lift. So, next up will be 315, and we'll see for probably a single or double, and we'll see if uh, any backgrounding happens. Mo happens more than likely will. So definitely around 315-ish is where I start to throw on knee sleeves for sure, regardless, and depends on how my back feels, whether it's tight or not, or if I'm feeling pretty fresh, I might use a belt on a regular squat. Um, knowing that this is pretty extensive on your back, throwing a belt on anyway, kind of keep my core tight, uh, what this could be good for is moderate to lighter weight without a belt to really build up that core strength. But since I'm going for max effort, I'm throwing on the belt and these sleeves now. So we'll hit this for a couple reps and you might see some back rounding. So keep an eye on that. But also focus on, <coughs> at least what I think about it is when I come to squat down, I really don't want to think about pressing too hard against these, uh, these uh, grips just because I want to keep in that neutral position to let the movement do what the movement does instead of changing it into something else or making it easier. I want to, I want to do this perfect, so we're going to keep trying to do it that way. But keep an eye out on the rounding, and if you want to watch it again, you can come back and watch and see if the handlebars do any movement on the way down. If you can see that, I'm not sure if you can, but if you can, just keep an eye on that as well. Those felt pretty smooth. Um, you might have seen some form breakdown, I'm not too sure. On the first one, it kind of did feel like I started to do it into a double, mo or double movement, into two movements. So when I came down, I was here. And then when I came up, it kind of felt like I did one of these numbers. My, my hip shot up. Instead of coming up straight up, it was more like that. So it was slowly turning into two movements, but we're going to jump up another 25 and do that for singles and we're just going to work on our singles until we get to a max effort. So you'll definitely see forearm breakdown and I'll kind of go over that as I'm doing it. So stay tuned for the next one. So 385. Sorry, I, and I don't know if I said it wrong before. This is 385. It looks like 365, but it's a 65 pound bar. So 385 on the bar. Hopefully we'll get a smooth single rep with minimal form break. Form breakdown, sorry. So, when I noticed it was a little slow coming out of the hole, um, that's kind of to be expected with uh, the low box. Um, once I started to get it moving out of the hole, it kind of flew up. Uh, I'll have to go back and watch the video, but I'm sure, I'm sure it was way more noticeable there on the areas that were starting to get weak during the lift. Um, still felt pretty smooth. I may jump up to what I would be 425 on uh, in total, but and I, I could maybe could do more, but without 
there being a spotter here, me being by myself, I'm just gonna kind of play it safe. Uh, that 385 was kind of a struggle, so we're gonna go for 425, and that'll be my max effort set for the day. So I'll see you guys in that clip, and hopefully all goes well. So before I get into this 425 attempt, uh, first off, I threw on the safeties because safeties over views. So if it might, if it's in your way, I'm sorry. Uh, but I'd rather not die tonight. Um, another side note I haven't talked about, I remembered it after my 385, but I forgot to mention it, is uh, I'm not really gonna get under the bar and explain it, but you're right here at the bar with the weight on, and once it gets a little heavy, it, it wants to, from the bars being out here, it wants to be right up here in your chest. So what you wanna do is when you get under it, the handlebars will be completely straight down, 90 degrees straight down like it is right now. So once you get under it, you kinda, you want to get to that position where it was before, where it's balanced on your back pretty well, um, but it's not too far up. Um, so you want to get to that neutral position that you had it in with the, either just the bar or the 135, and that'll be where you lift from. Um, you want to be careful because if you push that too far forward and you come to unrack it, that, I mean, you, there's a good chance you'll you'll hurt yourself from it falling backwards or hurt whoever's spotting you from falling backwards. So you kind of want to be careful for that, but really you just want to get yourself into a good position once you get under. So I'll come here and then I'll like bend up to where I'm in my starting position for I want to lift off. So focus on that when you do that. And actually I've had enough rest time, so I'm going to get in and do this. So this will be the struggle, but we're going to do it. So. And if not, it'll at least be a good learning experience for you guys on YouTube. Remember to always have a spotter. And if not, be smart with it. This may be a little risky, but I think we can do it. So let's get into it. And uh, watch and see if you can see how I position myself under the bar for starting the movement. So I come here, it feels like it's pulling me backwards and what I wanna do get the stance I want to get in to lift it off and then just come underneath and you might actually have to readjust your feet so I'll do that again real quick so I'm here this feels comfortable right but I can't lift off from here it's like almost doing a, a quarter quarter a one-eighth rep good morning so what I'll do is maybe even shoot a little far forward to where I want to start and really get under and get set to where I need to um, before I start but Enough talking, you match to do the rep, so here we go. Somehow we managed to not die, but, <laughs> oh man, that was scary. Uh, adrenaline kind of kicked in there for a second because I felt like I wasn't even going to get it, but sometimes you gotta, you just, it's kind of like a sumo deadlift off the floor. When you start it, it doesn't seem like it's moving, and then once it starts going, it just builds and builds and builds, and you complete it, so kind of is the same way on this. And like I said, it's good for the deadlift because it mimics the form. And I mean, it really does, <laughs> it really does. Uh, so with, the, with it being wide stance to a low box, it's almost like imitating a sumo deadlift. So that's how, I, how it kind of feels coming from the bottom is like a sumo deadlift. I feel like I'm pushing, pushing, pushing and it's barely moving, barely moving. And then once it gets started, it just comes right on up. But just like on a deadlift, on a heavy deadlift, your back will start to fail, just like it did there. And I felt it really bad. Um, and you've probably seen it on the way up once I was maybe like six inches, five, six inches off the, uh, the box. I really felt it on the way up and I could feel that my back was starting to give out. So that's what the safety squat bar is really good for, is uh, strengthening your back. And I know my coach is probably gonna see this video so I'm sorry in advance, I tried really hard to keep my back in, but 
may have overshot the max effort, may have not, we'll see. But that's what the safety squat bar is really good for and that's why personally I really like it and I'm glad it's programmed into my programming. So that'll be the video for the day. Hopefully it's not too long and it's something that you guys can watch to the very end. But definitely go try a safety squat bar if you don't have one at your gym. Try and go to a gym that has one. Well, maybe not. That might be a little too extra. But try and go there or try and find one to just mess with. It's really fun and it's a lot different if you've never done it before. It just it feels a lot different. Um, and if you've never safety squat bar and you have one, you've been front bar or front bar front squatting a lot. Um, you have wrist wrist pain. This is a great uh, great variation for a front squat. If you have a lot of wrist pain or uh, it just kills your delts or anything, this is this is great for it. It pretty much imitates a front squat besides it being behind you, uh, but it imitates how a front squat would feel. So if you want to try this, go ahead and try it. And if you liked the video and it was informative and it helped you a little bit, leave a like down below, leave a comment down below if you think I might have missed something or if there's something I said wrong. I'm kind of just going off of my personal experience and what I know about the safety squat bar and hopefully trying to pass on a little bit of information to whoever's watching. So thank you guys for watching this video. I'm gonna get the, done, get the rest of my workout done and try and get home. It's really late. So I will see you guys on the next one. Stay dynamic strong and have a good Christmas. It's the 23rd, uh, technically the 24th now, but uh, have a great Christmas and I will see you guys after Christmas, hopefully with a new camera lens. Peace.